Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Oh, the pageantry, James, the pageantry, the magic, the NFL drafts last night. Oh, I made it all the way to Haskins. <laughs> did Wait, you? Wait, did I? No, no, you didn't. Can't lie about that one, huh? Because what I don't, happened? I don't know if Haskins even made it all the way to Haskins. Uh, he, <laughs> Can you tell me? There's always one player in the draft who gets boned, right? I think the most infamous one is... Of our generation. Am I saying that right? I think so. It's a hard G, right? It's a hard G? Yes. Was Aaron Rodgers. So Aaron Rodgers was sitting in that green room for 300 hours, and they just kept panning back over and over and over again. And since then, players that aren't sure, who are kind of on the cusp of like, hey, man, I should be a top pick, but I'm not going to. the, like, closing call. Yeah. They're yeah. they're now doing outside parties somewhere else off site, which is smart, right? But then it's like, uh, you're at this big party. Yeah. So when I saw Dwayne Haskins, you know, obviously I love him because he's a quarterback of Ohio State. Um, but he threw for 50 touchdowns last year. He should have he should have been the first quarterback taken in the draft. Instead, it was Kyler Murray. I think Kyler Murray is too small, but that's a whole nother story. Don't really care. Was more excited to see where Haskins was going to go and all of that stuff. Thought for sure he was going to go to six at, at the New York Giants. I think everyone in the world assumed that. Then they panned to him at his private party, and he's not on the phone. Whenever these players are not on the phone, that means somebody didn't call them from that from a team to, to draft them. Right. So when he wasn't on the phone at six, I turned to you, and I was like, Oh, boy. And they kept panning to him, and he's just casually texting and doesn't look super happy. So no. I thought, mm, something is going on. Something is awry. So six goes. They take this uh, quarterback from Duke who's terrible. I mean, absolutely terrible. We watch a lot of Duke games because we're in North Carolina, so they're on all the time. And, and it, I have no other reason nor does the rest of the world to watch a Duke football game. Basketball, they're awesome. One of the greatest teams uh, out there in college sports, basketball-wise. Right. Every single year, they're amazing. Absolutely. Love when they're on. Love watching them play basketball. Love watching UNC, North Carolina, play basketball. Do not watch any of their football games because they're not football schools. They're not good. To my chagrin, when they drafted the quarterback from Duke with the sixth pick... Ooh, I didn't know what to think of that. Giants fans were <laughs> livid, booing all in all forms of the country. And this happens every year because a, a team always makes a really awful pick and their fans let them know about it. Haskins started laughing. But I turned to you and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Looking at the board here, there isn't a team until like 13 that needs a quarterback. And I was like, well, and I said on the sports show, on Drinking Bros Sports Show, I said, if by some miracle he was able to fall to 15 to the Washington Redskins, they need a quarterback too. That would be a great place for him. Um, he's from Maryland, so right. it's you know I think that stadium is maybe 30 minutes away from where he grew up. That's what happened. Oh, it is, and you 15. said that on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I look. No way was I expecting that. I thought, right. I thought quarterbacks would have gone off the board right around 10, and then. 13 and 15 would have been snowed. Like, hey, sorry, there's no there's no great quarterbacks left in this draft. That did not happen. And he was pissed. Pissed, Jabes. When I say pissed, I've never seen a kid get drafted in the first round of a draft and not smile at all. I didn't I didn't I didn't see him smile once last night. And then they interviewed him afterwards, mm-hmm. right? They sent somebody out to this this party wherever he was in in Maryland to to interview him and they were like hey uh, you don't really seem that excited like this has got to be an amazing moment and it was like yeah you know it is um, but the league done messed up 
And, and it was just like, all right. The beauty of this now, because of the pageantry and the magic, which I always love to sure, always talk about. Sure, sure. It's again, this should have been the Giants co- new quarterback. He was going to succeed Eli Manning and that that would have been a a big deal for the for for New York and the city of New York, right? Mm-hmm. Since that didn't happen and he fell all the way to the Redskins, he's now in the Giants division and he's going to be playing them twice a year. There's only 16 games in football a year <laughs> in NFL. He's going to be playing them twice. And he goes, "Look, if you don't think that I have a a chip on my shoulder, coming into this draft he goes imagine how big it is now mm-hmm. so i i look me personally if that was my quarterback i'd be amped about that i would be amped about that type of talk yeah blow it up every yeah because you you want to see a guy who's angry about it look what happened to aaron Rodgers, right i know i mean and aaron Rodgers is now you know give him something to prove that's it so uh, that's kind of Kind of where it laid with me last night mm-hmm. as, as far as the draft goes. The rest of it was uh, pretty predictable, I would say. There was a couple reaches in the in the draft, but nothing too out of control. Yeah. So uh, I enjoyed it. I Look, I enjoy it as always. It keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I've never seen Nashville go off like that. There was 100. I, well, Roger Goodell said there was over 200,000 people in the streets. Uh, ESPN, I think their report was like 150, 160. I, it wouldn't surprise me if it was over 200. I mean, you there was just humans as far as the eye could see for that thing. Oh, yeah, just standing in the street. Yeah. Which far, is... far, far <laughs> away from any screen, from any person, and just standing there. Yeah. And I just thought, wow. Crazy, right? Yeah. Like it, for for it me personally, crazy. look, I love the NFL. Uh, if I lived there, I would probably roll down, you know, maybe to a bar or something. But if I would have saw that many people when I turned the corner to go to that bar, I would have turned right back around and said, going to watch this from the comfort of my own home. And that's, and that's the difference, you know? Yeah. Yeah. With yeah, yeah. Us. Cause they, again, they have a, a nice little VIP area for a certain select amount of people. And then the rest of it's gen pop and you're, you're packed in with everybody else drinking beers, no place to piss. And it's like, eh. And then it started raining last night. Mm-mm. Now the, the people in VIP up at the front of the stage, they're all covered. Right. So they're fine. They were, sure. they were raging last night and you were like, ah, oh, man, this is great. Yeah. And this then looking great. back, just. Yeah. Fuck all you guys. And, and, and not only that, but like the, the fact that it's in prime time now on ABC, right? That's a big deal. That is going across the country for free. And then they were televising on ESPN and the NFL network. It's because, I mean, the NFL has just become a juggernaut. They, st- they, just, they, they stumbled a little bit with the Kaepernick thing, um, lost a bunch of ratings, but then I think it's propped up by fantasy football. And in, in particular now, um, in particular sports gambling, now that they've legalized sports gambling in all 50 States, you're rooting for your team harder than ever before. And it's fun. Like I, I enjoy it, and I'm I'm glad the I'm glad to see the league coming back a little bit since the Kaepernick shit. You know, they settled with him. They settled his lawsuit, got him out of there. He's not coming back to play anymore. Nice. Nobody's kneeling anymore. So, uh, to me, like that took a lot of people out of it, and now everybody's like, all right, cool. The dust Let's is settled a little play. bit. Let's just move on. Right. They're gonna have a problem with uh, kind of the violence aspect that's going on off the field. Because there was some audio of of one of the league's top players last night, like him and his wife arguing uh, about beating his son and some other stuff. And you're just like, man. What? Yeah. And there was a a prominent reporter for ESPN named Michelle Beadle, uh, who's great. She covers all the NBA now. But she was doing a morning show with the rest of those guys. And she got on air after the last incident happened before. She goes, I'm not covering the NFL anymore. Live on air on ESPN. And ESPN owns the rights for Monday Night Football. So they are an NFL-owned network. They pay billions of dollars for those rights. She, and she came on and was just like, I, I, to me, the NFL breeds nothing but a culture of off-the-field violence and, and things like that. And she's like, I'm not going to be a part of it anymore. And uh, they, last night, they, somebody leaked this audio tape maybe about 30 minutes before the draft started with this, this Tyree Kill guy and what was happening. And... Uh, just kind of put a 
Yeah. A little bit of a somber mood on things where you're like, man, could we wait on all of that? But, uh, you know, other than that, if they can clean up that problem, uh, the NFL looks like it's going to be fine for years and years and years to come. How we watch it and view it and gamble on it uh, will change. But uh, the, the NFL as a product seemingly gets better, is getting better. And that Nashville, seeing that crowd in Nashville was was proof of it because it's just the draft. And like you said, you can't see. No. You can't see past, you know, You're the first 50 yards. You're watching it on a big screen, yards. standing in the street. Yeah. Right up next to someone. But you are drinking and you're a part of the party and all that stuff. So Listen, eh. I get it. Eh. I get it. And you have a sports show. I do. That you guys, did you go over it? Are you going to go over all of this again? Like the picks and stuff or what? Well, it, so here's the thing. The way they've split it up now, the first round is on Thursday. Okay. So second round's tonight. And then the rest of the rounds are over the weekend. Okay. So, so you guys are going to kind of. We'll, we'll do a wrap up show on the entire up. draft. Got yeah. it. Because first round, a lot of people trade out. There's usually about six or seven trades in the first round. Because they, you can get value picks later and, and all that other stuff. So, like, uh, as fun as the first round is, like, tonight and then the next over the weekends where things really get interesting where you're like, all right, okay. cool. There's some players that, that are your personal favorites that, that you're like, oh, man, they should have gone higher. But you don't want to pay them that much money. And uh, th- there's a, a, a crazy business aspect to it. And that Kyler Murray kid, man, first player ever drafted in the first round of Major League Baseball and NFL turned down four point six million dollars signing bonus is the is the number nine pick uh, a salary four point six million dollars salary is the number nine pick for the Oakland A's and said nah I'm gonna give this NFL drafting a shot and end up right. going number one he made himself about forty million dollars more last night right which is pure insanity to me you ever think about that like w- what if that is your child and that happens. Um, it, the draft or just something like this? Yeah. Sports in general. Like, cause we have boys. Yeah. We have two boys. Yeah. And obviously, you know, I would say what 95% of parents talk about sports and their children. I played sports growing up. You played sports growing right. up. Right. I, that, that's it. That's the one thing when I watch things like this, I always think about of like, man, I wonder what the parents are thinking. Like that type of pride has got to be amazing. Oh yeah. For me. It would have to be like they would have to be super into it. The whereas, kids? Yeah, yeah. Whereas it seemed like a lot of the people that went first round, it was a family business. So the dads were football. The kids just did with the dad. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? And they are good. But um, in this family, it'd be like it would have to – they would have to just like, I mean – love it right yeah and want to do it so yeah, bad yeah, yeah. and we would be like okay yeah we'll do what we can kind of seem like these kids and a lot of them now uh it's family business it's hiring coaches it's like yeah it's a, the, you know you did you doing what your dad did yeah, exactly it was dad it, after dad yeah. that was football mm-hmm. and brothers and everything so I don't know. I don't know if in the future, if you're going to be able to get in there with just a a kid that just wanted to do it right away from their family, like it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. You brought that up because that's kind of the way I feel about it now too, where, you know, we try to be honest about our children's abilities and things, our kids ability, not children's. I like that though. Children's (laughs) children's children's. Um, we try to be honest about our kids' abilities to do things. And we always say on the show, like, look, they're not geniuses. You know they're what I'm saying? They're not gifted. Great they're looking. Not, oh, not cute gifted. and nice. Yeah, yeah. The nicest know, and, humans on the planet. And smart. Yeah. But last night when I was not playing gifted. in the, the, the backyard playing soccer with my child, sure. um, we're just kicking the ball normally. Like, he's not Pele. He's not going to go and save the, the U.S. team. And when we were watching the draft... And they're interviewing father after father and parent after parent. And was just like, well, we got co- – either they bought – they had coaches or they had, uh, you know, some stern dad. Like one dad last night they interviewed was like, I was waking up my kid at 2 o'clock in the morning to drink protein shakes. Right. And, I, and like ninth grade. And I'm like, so Whoa. As with everything, you kind of – the people that either can't afford stuff like that or yeah. can't uh, – don't have – parents that push them in that way 
I think more and more those people will start getting filtered out. I don't know. The story of the person that just out of nowhere yeah. just loved it, right? Since they were a kid. I mean, look at Tiger. I mean, he was getting slapped in the in the back of the head. Yeah, yeah. Sleeping in a garage. As a child, right? Yeah. So, yeah, when you say, like, what if that was our kid? It would be a thing of, like, <sighs> if they were interviewing me, I'd be like, dude. He just wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah. And I am here because he invited me. Yeah. I don't know how much I have to do with any of this. Yeah. And it's a possibility, but I hope it's baseball. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you never know. You, you never know. I, I mean, look, I, as, a, as a kid, I was really, really good in sports. I got a ton of scholarship offers for football at a high school. I knew I was not good enough to be a professional athlete at right. pretty much any – I mean – I would say after ninth grade, I knew I was like, man, there's no way. Um, the kids that that are, in my opinion, are the ones who have a shit ton of money and can afford these coaches, um, or they That's did it themselves. What it kind of seemed like to me. Yeah, and like Just when I watch friends of mine online, uh, one of my good friends from college, I see his kid is like, he's like seven or eight, right, tops, and he's like a dominant wrestler. Well, my buddy was a dominant wrestler and like he lived that life. He was an amazing wrestler and like all the way till the end, still deadlifts like 900 right. pounds on the weekends, the dad, you know? And I'm like, yes, geez. And so when I watch him on like Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff, the way he's coaching his kid and the things that he's doing for his kid, he was built for that. He did that life. Now his kid is going to do that life. Do we all become our parents at some point of whatever we're doing? Yes, like, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Because um, my, my, look, my father was a, a disc jockey. He was a radio DJ. I think eventually, and yeah. You're, I'm not do, I'm doing, you know, hosting t- two of the biggest podcasts on the planet. Right. <laughs> Never in a million years did I think that. Yeah. I had no desire. Like, yeah. Right. None. So I don't know. Yeah, the Haskins kid looked like he didn't really have anybody there connection-wise. So these kids that were so, oh, going to, to play pro, he did actually, um, he had a, he had a couple of people, um, his dad got him coaches. Okay. So it's the thing of like the dad that is, you know, connected with the school, with the people and the thing. And I don't know. I right. kind of, I, that was the vibe I got. I watched three people. So what the fuck do I know? And that's why, you know, no, you, you stayed up through like, uh, I think maybe 10. You, you hit dr- oh, pick yeah, 10. no, no, no. But yeah, here's yeah. the thing. You get 10 minutes of pick, so that's... That was a long uh, time. It's a long time. It's 100 minutes. That was minutes. a long time because I famously... It was an hour and 40 minutes, I James. famously love sports so much that I shut down. <laughs> um, I came in and you were watching, I think, some Real Housewives of whatever city it was. And, and, that's, like, and that's up to me. And that's my prerogative. <laughs> and um, I am my own person yeah we have a big enough house no I'm just yeah, yeah yeah exactly there's 19 right tvs in here yeah. <laughs> i was right, right next to you yeah. but anyway um yeah there's enough tvs in the house that that i can you grab can, a- you can graze you can you can snack on re- real housewives or are they desperate is that the that, that was the other one right some yeah that was the scripted show ah. this is uh the reality <laughs> so i Which was is at, somehow um, worse than the scripted show Worse, more desperate. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more desperate somehow than the Desperate House Tribes it is, scripted yeah. show. It yeah. Is. I was watching the Atlanta reunion. Woo! Oh, boy. I know you want to get into it. No. We won't. No, I won't. We won't. Oh, I don't need to know what, what Nini's up to. I'm kidding. I don't even know if that's her fucking name. You do. You just said it right. You know why? They, they, they prop her out for all of these events like she's hilarious or some spokesperson for something and you're just like no you're just a, we're good you were just married and right. that was all you did in this right. life uh <laughs> god damn sure <laughs> that real was it just reminds me of a bitch fest you know kind of yeah like, uh, right now it's hard for me to watch oof. because i'm like in certain things in my life anyways it's only fun when everything's good with you do you know what I mean? Because you're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> losers. Yeah, they yeah, can't yeah. get it together, right? <laughs> Man, when I watch that, I just uh, I weep. I, I, like, I feel bad for their husbands. I feel bad for the kids, all of it, all the way around. Mm-hmm. And they're, now they have spinoff shows of whatever. What were you watching the other night where it was uh, 
it seemed like a Southern family. And they had invited, like, there was two blonde girls in their mm-hmm. 20s, and they had invited all their ex-boyfriends to some party or, you know, anniversary or get-together, whatever it was. That's a new family. From they, they, they appeared like they were from Georgia, maybe. And they had accents? Yeah. And they didn't have uh, the Chrisleys on it, so I was just like... Well, that could be Southern Charm. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Gosh. No, think on it because there's there's a 900 million spinoffs of it. So yeah, I don't know what I was watching. I don't it either. Was either New York, New York. I uh, no. There was New York Housewives. Nope. Beverly Hills Housewives. No, 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 no. This was a. It, it, was, it looked like a Southern, Southern family. They, yeah, they were in Georgia. Southern family in Georgia. Yeah. Was it the white? Is it, is it Kim Tardy for the party? I think that was it. Is he? Is she married to Beerman? I don't know that. I, you, well, she's married to a. The only connection I can make with you on this is that she's married to a football NFL football player. Okay. okay. Something Beerman. Gotcha. gotcha. Troy. Troy Beerman. Yeah, why not? He seems like he's on the bench a lot. Yeah. But they seem to, and he keeps like going from team to team. Doesn't and they register call him, to me. Like, right. NFL player. Well, that's what happens. Is you know where well, you can say you are right. Yeah. But like 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 Colton, no one could, Colton Underwood. Right. Right. You're like were you? I think I he remember. just got invited to like a practice squad type sitch, but I don't, I don't, right. I can't remember him playing for a team. Yeah. That kind of thing where the you go bachelor. like, I guess you could technically say you were drafted. Yeah. Or you were an never, ex-NFL maybe you never player played. or maybe on a, a, a scout team. And that's sort of the thing of it, right? Like as soon as you get that draft or that call or you get to go, you can say... Yeah. I was, oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. Whether, and then people are like, eh, I guess he was. You don't really look into it. It's a Beerman guy. Okay. Yeah. He has a jersey. Well, the ladies Beerman. the ladies don't, you know. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys do. We're just like, hey, man. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I don't know you. I don't so know you. So as far as the you. Real Housewives, a lot of them are married to NFL, you know, former NFL stars. And like, I've never heard of them like from you. Yeah. But they're touting them as NFL, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know when you're in the. No, I get it. I get it. And look, if you get drafted, even if you sit on the bench, I think your minimum salary year is like seven hundred thousand dollars or something. So you're and fine. you can stay. Yeah, you're you know fine. you can continue to to use that. That's fine. Yeah, because I look. I, I interviewed a guy, super fascinating interview, who kind of bounced around from team to team to team, and. He played about six or seven seasons, and he walked away with six point eight million. So it was just like, great. What other sure. profession can you do that in? Now he's thirty, rich as fuck, and just kind of does whatever he wants to do. And you're like, eh, all right, cool. I think he's doing some type of CBD. Yeah, there's <laughs> Every, a natural progression, right? There's a natural progression. You know, they're selling that at the gas station now here. Dead serious, and it's on the so it's stuck on the window of our main gas station that we use. Uh, Scotchman, Scotchman's our, our jam out here. They're selling CBD. Huh? It, it's a huge thing. So I walked in and I was just like, I mean, cause it says it right on the window. It's like a, I want to say one, you know, well, you know, one of those stickers, but it's not a sticker. Yeah. It's oh, kinda, like a decal kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's a huge decal on this window that, that you can see through. Cause you can, you know, you obviously have to see into the store. And I was like, and they were like, now selling CBD. And it was and it's this, always like in tie dye. Y- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like. But it's this specific company, and uh, I walked up to the register, and I was like, "Oh, what do you, what do you sell? Where, where's the CBD?" At? She's like, "Oh, it's, our, it's right behind here." That bottle that you tried, right? right. Same exact dropper bottle is now going for nineteen ninety nine. Well, there, there, and then you got it the from an actual like yeah. head shop, right? Yeah, but here's the thing with that, right? Do we know? Do any of us do know? Do you what know this, where this your CBD? CBD is coming from? Yeah, and if I hear one more person. Telling me about the benefits of CBD, I'm, I'm going to lose my mind. I mean, but it does help you sleep. Yeah, for you, for you, yes, correct. I'm not going to go on and on about the benefits. No, no, no. And I don't think all, like we've said, I don't think all the benefits that they're saying, I think it kind of helps you relax. And that's about sure. as much as I'll give weed, yeah. anything. But my, my, my main issue with it is this. You can now sell this in gas stations, right? Mm-hmm. We can't buy weed here. Mar- marijuana is not legal right. here. But this is an extract from marijuana. It's mm-hmm. like, 
what are we doing anymore? Like, can you just start selling weed and, co- and we can call this a well, day? We always have the uh, theory that, you know, when they set up these CBD either crops, yeah. stores, they're getting ready for it to be legal so they can just move right into that, right? Yeah. That makes more sense to me than like going all gung ho CBD. Right? Yeah. Let me let me ask you. Can we, are we allowed to talk about your mom? Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Uh, Hi, mom. She's Hi. Probably listening. If so. she if she is fantastic. Um, she invested in a yeah. marijuana store in Ojai in California. In California, it's legal. and it's totally legal there. Totally legal. All you have to do is walk in with an ID, and that's it. Super easy process. And uh, driving up to Ventura because I was you know working a lot in LA. Yeah. Obviously, you're from there, so like this doesn't this isn't like a surprise to you. There was all these signs for a, you know, a marijuana company and uh, come to this shop and come to this shop or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we got up there and I was like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop on out. Everybody's asking me to, to, to bring some back. I was like, what's what's uh, where should I go? And your mom was like, I, I, I own one of these. I'm like, I'm an investor in one. And I was like, right. what? You, you didn't tell me that. Yeah. It's called Shang- Shangri-La. Lead. Shangri-La. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in Ojai. In Ojai. And they've got about four, four or five stores open up in Ojai. Uh, we went. To, I went to all of them, and uh, just to kind of check them out. Quality check. You know. Yeah. Well, you want to see the prices. Yeah, yeah. Because like, like the CBD in that gas station, right? That was half the price is what that head shop is. I don't know what the difference is. Why wouldn't you just buy that one? Yeah, I guess. You know what I'm saying? So it just seems like jankier. I don't know. But it's why? Like, why don't you same, buy your shirts at Walmart? Same bottle. Here's the thing. I've bought some cool shit at Walmart. I haven't. So maybe I'm the asshole who's just been. Who has no eye for quality? No, not that. But like a lot of the things are the same. They're just put under a different banner or logo. And you're like, all right, cool. Look, you take Jessica Simpson, for example. She's made a gajillion dollars off of either, what is it, Target or or Walmart products? Target, not Walmart. People buy that stuff all the time and it looks all right. I rolled in there and bought some shorts, uh, a couple flannels. and Because let's face it. I have flannels of flannel. Like you're not really. And I think with the guys' clothes, you can get away with it. And they do. They have Dickies. They have like they have Wrangler jeans. Brands. Like all, all of it. Yeah. They have brands there for the girls. It really is just like you can tell that the little China, you know, child. Yeah, is, made is the one it. that's sewing them. Sure. So I think with the the guys' brands, it's a bit different. Um, Target is where the gals can go and kind of get away with a lower price on something. Yeah. But go ahead. So I, to, to make the, the, the comparison, why I'm talking about this is I saw all the signs for this one company going up to Ojai and then I didn't see any for your moms and I didn't know why. And I went right. into all the shops. She had the best prices, friendliest staff, and it's, it's literally the same product. Right. So it's exactly like the CBD thing at the gas station, the head shop. Like, I don't know which is which, like, right. why not just go with the best prices at the best place? Um, so shout out to Shangri-La. Your mom's doing Shangri-La. it. Shangri-La. What a cool, weird investment. Yeah, well, she's it's awesome. been... It is awesome. Um, she's been... Ever since you could get a growing... A card to grow in California. Uh-huh. A long time ago. She's been, like, growing in the backyard. She's been... She's been on this on this train for a little while. Yeah. So now it is so easy, so legal. Like, why not? Yeah. And you just need to work on marketing. And that's, that's it. with everything. That's with everything in life. Um, but, but the, you know, to again, to, to bring it back to the Walmart comparison of like, eh, I've gotten some great shit in Walmart. You never know. So if you're out there and you're like, man, don't go for the flashy name all the time. You, don't, you really, really don't have to. That's true. That's true with some stuff. That's true with, with a lot of stuff, I, I'll say. It but is. There like, is some. For, and for I, me, yeah, for me personally, like when I look at people wearing Gucci belts or – like flip flops and all that stuff. I'm like, man, I don't, you're not going to get in Cause now they're calling them slides. Right. Oh man, this is slides. It's a fancy name for a flip flop. Don't sell me on the slide thing. It's a goddamn flip flop. That's right. what it is. Right. Zero desire. It doesn't really look that much different than my Adidas flip flops. Yeah. So why am I going to pay two grand for a flip flop? And I hear you in that instance, there are certain things that, when you feel them like a Gucci jacket or a bag or something, yeah. you just go, oh. And you get it, right? 
just the craftsmanship and the the material and the way that it's made, like you understand, yeah, and you can hold it next to one that's like from Walmart. There's certain things, yeah, that they, you go, absolutely. Oh, boots, things like this. Um, where for, you're for like, dudes, oh, okay. you can get away with half your wardrobe where it's just like jeans. Everybody's wearing jeans. They have every oh, kind of jean in there, look. Lee Wrangler, whatever it is. Like, I'll unless get a you're Walmart a, jean. a unless you're a true lit religion dude. Uh, let's face it, you're probably wearing an, an affliction t-shirt with that, those and true religion jeans. And, um, <laughs> that's Walmart's not going to be your place. Sure. But I've gotten shirts there. I've gotten jeans there. Like zero problems. Socks, boxers, like yeah. whatever, man. Uh, so, yeah. And that's the other, you know, that's the beauty of being a man. You know? I know. I Just know. one of many. <laughs> Things that are easier for you, right? Well, with t-shirts too, by the way. I'm wearing a ghost bed t-shirt. Obviously, they're one of our sponsors. If you're watching the video show, obviously, you'll see it emblazoned across my chest. Like this. My chest. This is a good example, right? Yeah. You feel it, mm-hmm. and it's soft. It's well-made. It's it's just different. You yeah. Know? It's a craftsmanship thing. The beds, the thing. It's like... You can just tell. Well, for for a t-shirt... And can you get a cheaper one? Sure. For a t-shirt company... Um, if you're buying a t-shirt out there as, as, as a man or a whole man in this sure. life, there's, pro- I'll, I'll, I'll drop this, the secret here. There's pretty much one company that makes the softest, like nicest t-shirts. Uh, it's called next level. Yeah. And they're not a sponsor obviously, but they're, they're the guys who provide all the t-shirts, all of this shit. American Peril used to do it back in the day. Um, but they dove <laughs> went dove, out of biz. Dove Charney. Yeah. Took that one right into the ground. Um, but I, I used to love American Apparel. I used to do all the t-shirts. And now it was uh, another company. And now this next level is kind of taken over. If I get a t-shirt from a company, and I, I was I was actually talking to Ghostbed about this yesterday. Because um, we're going to be doing some more things with them in the future. And I said, you know, the, these t-shirts you got are different than the last ones. I really like these t-shirts. Like, I love these yeah, t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we switched up. And I was like, no, I know. Mm-hmm. It's next level. Like the, that's the brand. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if yeah. you get the brand and it's next level, you're good to go. Like who was the company yesterday? Uh, Bronx. Was it the Bronx Bombers? No, it was uh, the Bronx Blues. Bronx Blues. Yeah. Sent us some t-shirts, mm-hmm. which was amazing. Some Yankee shirts. Uh, a bunch of Yankees fans listen to the show. We're going to go up there. That's, that's your favorite team. Yeah. We're going to go up there one of these days and rage and go to a Yankees game. We're going to put on the stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I want to give them a shout out because that was the first thing I looked. I checked for. I was like, because there's this? a tag yeah, in the back. And, yeah. And I'm like, all right, let's see what let's see what they got. It was next level. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, this is going to be a great t-shirt. Mm-hmm. I can tell just from looking at the tag of where it came from, if it's going to be great or not. If I get a Gildan on me. Oh, yeah. My mind as well be wearing a burlap sack because I'm gonna, it's going to be itchy, baggy. Uh, it's going to hurt in some places. It, it really does. Like if I get a Gildan, I immediately wipe my face with it or, or the car. Like I, I, I'll wipe something off the car that's been on there for, sure. for a while that I haven't taken it in. Mm-hmm. Maybe some bird shit. And there then just toss it. Just toss it right into the, the garbage can. Can't do it anymore. You know? You know what's funny? The Dove Charney thing. He tried to make his second reemergence with Gildan. So he wanted to make it so that Gildan was cool. So t- tell the audience who Do- who Dove is. Dove Charney was the founder and, I mean, head of American CEO. Apparel, yeah. CEO for years from the beginning till mm-hmm. it was like a, was a t-shirt company and a, you know, small warehouse to what it finally became. Mm-hmm. And um, with sexual harassment kind of charges. Mm-hmm. Against him, he needed to step down and eventually all sort of trickled away to where American Apparel now, the, all the stores are basically closed. There's maybe a couple open. Right. And so after that went down, he wanted to start a new, you know, a new Trend. adventure yeah. because that's what he does. Yeah. And he's a little little salesman, little shysty little dude. Ah, you need him in the world, but go ahead. Listen, I don't mind him. Yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, you need those type of guys in the yeah, world, yeah, not yeah. him individually. And but. so his reemergence that he tried to do, which because probably nobody has heard of it, didn't really work out that well, was he was trying to totally change the trend 
from super soft, amazing t-shirts to like the big baggy Gildan ah. and have that be like the cool thing. And since he made American Apparel as far as just like basics on basics, like a white t-shirt mm-hmm. with white shorts, cool. He thought he could do it with Gildan. With Gildan. No, 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 no. There's not, no, there's sir. no coming back from that. And the, the reason why is this, the, the, the margins of the shirts are so low for Gildan to bring that up to a level to where you're actually oh, no, profitable and making yeah. things. Like you'd have to change the t-shirt. You'd have to physically change the cotton and all of that stuff. No, he didn't want it to be like comfortable or anything. He did not. No, he oh, wanted God. it to be, right. So he wanted it to be like the Gildan as is right. with like cool things on it, whatever he's doing. Oof. And so that was his, there's a podcast called Startup and they did a whole, I think it's like an eight episode following him around doing this venture. Right. It's cringy. It's interesting. You feel kind of bad for the guy. By he, sexual harassment, yeah. it was he dated people. He dated employees. Yeah. It wasn't like any rape or any unwanted thing. It was like he would date people that he worked with. Yeah. And that in business, especially if you're a CEO, doesn't work out right. Now. Now. It used to be Back the in the day, yeah. yeah. He would just hire common hot practice. girls yeah. and like, you yeah, know. Date them. Date them. Yeah. They'd still work in like a store, but. Sure. So. <laughs> it's a good one. Check it out. Dove Charney. All Start right. Up. Where, where is he? What network? Where is, is the show? Startup. Yeah. It's a startup po- startup podcast. Oh, it's a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I didn't know if he was doing a reality show because no, no. I'd seen clips of him online. Oh, so okay. I, yeah, he's so I, trying. He's trying oh, he all is. different gotcha, types gotcha. of things. Okay. But because I'd seen some footage of him, because he's an entertaining guy. He is. And so it seems it's really fun. When you were talking about it, it seemed sure. it seemed picture perfect for a reality show. I was like, oh, oh yeah. that would be Which super he interesting. Do. I know. But I'm sure with all of his background, it just could not work. Mm-hmm. He just keeps hitting uh, roadblocks with what happened with American Apparel. You know, right. well, not really many people want to be associated with him, but. It's a super entertaining uh, listen. Startup is on the Gimlet net- Network. So it's Startup Podcast. Gotcha. Um, and then look I, for... I, I, know, I know which look, one you're talking about. Look for the Dove Charney yeah. uh, sort of story. Like I said, they did about eight an eight, eight episode arc of him and just following him around and so good. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's an great. entertaining dude. I would dude, love yeah. to have him on. Like, I know. A call with him because he would do it and he would, he would sell whatever it is he's got going on right now. And I, I love that. It's yeah. a hustle. It's a hustle. Yeah, it is. It look, every, everything's a hustle in this life. Like he, even the draft last night, there was a bunch of celebrities there promoting things. And I was like, Whoa, yeah. this is weird. Like Taylor Swift was on the draft last Pops night up, yeah. announcing her new song and music video that was dropping at midnight. And I was like, w-. I mean, she, yes, she is from Nashville and she's, you know. Like we said, she's probably she lived in the apartment that they were yeah, probably yeah, yeah, filming in the, in the above. Building, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> she lives one of those nice, like lofty apartments on Broadway, I believe. I, th- it's I something look, like she owns a bunch of houses, so right. who knows? But I, I will say this because I was up. The draft ended late, and I was like, "I'll flip. I'll turn this on." Ah, she did it again, man. She just keeps dropping hits. Do you like it? Uh, here, the here's song? the thing. I, I'm not, I'm not that big of a fan of this song. Okay. But I, I, I can see that it is going to be an anthem. It Massive, reminds me of, yeah. it reminds me of if if they like Happy by Pharrell. Like if you did a huge song for a children's movie, this would be the biggest song there is. And yeah. she's going to make a gajillion dollars. She partnered up with uh, Panic at the Disco on this one. Yeah. The lead singer Panic at the Disco. Mm. The two of them fit great in the song. I'm able to look at music, even though if I don't like it, I'm not a fan of it. Same way with films. Like I'm able, I'm able to separate the people from the art and whatever yeah. it is and, and just be like, all right, cool. That song's a, a massive hit. Yep. It is a massive runaway hit, and she did it again. So I don't like it, but it doesn't, sure. it doesn't matter about me. Like I, I guarantee you after the third listen when I hear it in the car yeah. – You'll like it. I like it. And I'll sing it. And my, it. my kids will like Bump it. Bump around to it. My kids will like it and the whole thing. And it's like, as much as I would love to shit on Taylor Swift, because I, I think 
after the the the, the, the Kanye thing with Kim Kardashian, where right. she recorded the thing and she was the, the mock outrage and it was all fake. I have a hard time seeing her in appearances now as anything other than fake, including last night. Mm-hmm. And, but hey, it doesn't matter doesn't if you're matter. able to drop hits. It does not matter. It really yeah, doesn't. She is not the sweet innocent. Thank you so much. No, girl, that you think she is, but fucking a. And somebody told me. Tell you right now, you can't get that far being nice and sweet. Somebody told me like you. her, you know the 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 backstory behind her of what she does, like with all the fans and these drop ins and all of this stuff. Like she does it all the time right before big events because mm-hmm. it's going to get press and then this or whatever. So like two weeks ago, she dropped in on some fans and did this thing and. I was like, oh, that was a nice thing. And then I saw her last night at the draft. She's like, I've got a new song. And I was like, oh, there we are. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. She she drops hits. And in a world today where artists are starving for hits, there's very few that can crank them out like that over and over and over again. Taylor Swift is one of them. I mean, it is insane. When I heard that song, how catchy and poppy it was, I was like, God bless it, man. You did it again. <laughs> You yep. crazy? Because there's got to be something weird. Like, there's no way you're that hot and talented and not married or, or have a steady boyfriend for longer than two months without something being wrong up here. Well, like I've always said, <laughs> she's just uh, been in this machine for so long that I think she's immature in a lot of ways. And then I think she's also I, the fakeness gets to people. I know this from personal experience. Like after a while being with someone that is or being around someone that is fake, fake, fake all the time. Right. It gets, it gets hard. It gets hard to deal with. It's fun for a little bit. And then you're like, Hey man, (laughs) we just have, you know what I mean? We just have a real conversation. Just a little bit. Vulnerability. There has to be some balance with that. And the other point is, uh, that she can't get to the level that she's at being nice and sweet. And I don't think anyone can probably so there's not. someone you see, yeah. even the Beyonce video, you see her being so nice. Yeah. To all those people. I promise you to get to that point. There was a lot of moments, not on camera that she was a stone cold, hardcore bitch. Yeah. Well, we, we in the documentary. You, you got to see it behind the scenes that she was unhappy with things and whatever. But and she wasn't, she wasn't bitchy about it. She's at a level now. Cameras are everywhere. Yeah. She has enough money. She has enough, you know, people around her that will get things done that she can be the, hey, guys, you know, this is just not working. Let's make it work. Yeah. But I promise you that up until that point and you know, with Destiny's Child shit and all of this, like she has cracked some eggs. She's been the bitch. She has lost friends and she is now at the level that she's at being nice to people that work for her and hanging out with other super rich people. But my, I stand by the fact that you cannot get to that level, no matter who you are without being a bitch or an asshole to someone. And it's just a matter of whether you can handle that or whether you want to do it. Right. right? And so Taylor Swift, you saw it in that little recording with Kim yeah, where, you know, She'll she'll crack some eggs. She'll some heads ro- will roll. Doesn't matter who it is. She'll get to where she needs to get to. Yeah, uh, she will. And you know, I, again, being that big and pumping out hits like this, I, you're right. It's probably the only way. I don't know anybody it's the nice only doing way. it. So exactly, who do you know that that was thought of as just even J Lo up until the point? So now she's just so sweet everywhere, right? No. She's so sweet. <laughs> but do you remember when, oh, yeah. you know, famously there was, I mean, she was diva. She was bitch. She was, you know, nothing was good enough. She don't look at her. Shit yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if, and if one of my best friends from college worked on her, uh, a music video for her way, way back in the day. Yeah. And now all of it was 100% true. I was like, what's the story? And he goes, bro, it is a nightmare. Um, and her people are nightmares and the whole thing. And it's, it sucks. You get to a level where they are Beyonce or whatever that you can isolate yourself from anyone really seeing the bitchy side, Taylor Swift. Yeah. And you can, you, you are in control of your brand. You can go on to these shows and be sweet, drop in on the fans and be sweet. Mm-hmm. And then you just don't call Kanye anymore. Cause he'll fucking put it out there. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, so you just kind of. 
figure out who it is. Yeah. Everybody's putting it out there these days. Uh, even that Tyree Kill thing last night. It was audio was dropped. I guess she secretly recorded him in an airport or whatever. I don't. I, man, it's getting harder to, to trust anybody these days. To be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but on the on the new singer tip, like uh, the new song tip, Springsteen came I out know, with a new song that. today. I was like, what? What? They really don't communicate in these businesses anymore, music wise. Movies, they may, but I think I think Bruce doesn't. He goes, that doesn't affect me. I don't Her think they, fans are not buying my. I don't shit. think they do because music is now turned into. Let me just drop this in the middle of the night. No one knows. No press or whatever. Right. See books, how it does. Books and movies you cannot do that with. Right. It just does not work. So you've got to have promotion for it. And for a long time. For a long time. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you know the the fuck the the Avengers movies out this weekend. Um, we're recording this on Friday. The show drops on Sunday nights. So we don't know what the numbers are. I've. I think it's going to break every record there ever was. Um, we'll see. But even them, I mean, those guys were pr- promoting this six months ago. Like, I remember seeing teasers oh. and clips. And, and the amount of press. I mean, they are just, they yeah. run them yeah. ragged. They they can't just be like, Avengers coming out tonight. Like, God, yeah, they yeah, would yeah. love it. Right? Even, even no press, uh, books. Nothing. Books is the same way where it's just like, hey, man, we're, we've got to, like, I was on the phone with the publisher this week and uh, they were like, we've got to get this promotion going by Monday or Tuesday of next week. And I was like, great, you know, whatever. And you're making last minute decisions and, and all of this other stuff. And you're like, uh, that's still like four months away. We do. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Four months. away. Yeah. And that's what it is. And you drop and drop and drop and then you ramp up right before. And it's just a fucking. Yeah. Yeah. It's a God, never what ending. What a dream that would be, right? Psycho. To just be able to just. It'd be a dream. I'll, I'll drop t- a trailer and then drop the movie <laughs> and just be like, how do you guys like it? Like, we, we I tr- think maybe eventually you will be able to. No, we tried to do it. I'm saying like with Netflix. With Oh, uh, with Netflix? Yeah, where you could just... Because a lot of times like we'll go on there and be like, nobody fucking told us about this. Yeah, and now it's fucking... I, you're, you're right. I think Netflix gets away with that. Um, but that's it right now. But but you're not asking people to Buy get a babysitter, yes, go to yes, a movie yes, theater yes. Like, like, like the Avengers. Um, that's a, a whole nother beast. I think with these guys like this, uh, when I, whenever I see them in interviews and you know, they're all, they're always having a good time. I was like, man, you know why you're, you're having a great time right now. Cause you just act, you don't have to deal with anything else except for where you've got to be like, where somebody's telling you, you've got to be. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, all right. And some of their posts have already changed. Cause now that these guys are out of these contracts, they're like, cool. I'm not going to talk about the Avengers anymore. I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. Right. Um, I saw one of them today. Uh, had like this super political post and i was like man it is opening day of your movie today like political yeah yeah yeah. what was it uh i forget they was, have to be contractually obligated to not do that for at least after the opening right i it's the, it's t- today is is the opening or actually okay. technically it was last night so okay so there you go i think you're good done i think Talk you're good after fate. this yeah um but and by all means like the 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 reviews have been crazy positive so far so uh this is one where it's like, man, uh, maybe you, you feel you ever feel guilted into seeing a movie because everybody else has seen it. That's the way I feel with this one. That's the way I felt with Black Panther too. I was like, uh, yeah, I'll go see this. Yeah, I think there's certain. I feel ones I, that I'm it, starting to feel like a guilt in this of like, man, I've, I I should go see this. I'm feeling three it, hours is that's a commitment. Yeah, all from guilt, huh? I. Uh, that's a guilt watch. That's a long guilt watch. I, I think Black Panther was like two, into, two and a half. So into a Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I have. I'm been. enough in the minority now, and there's enough like memes and people making fun of of people that say I don't watch Game of Thrones. Yeah, where I'm like, okay, <laughs> like exactly who the fuck am I? There was this one meme where it was like everyone. Everyone else that says they don't like GOT and then they have, it's like an aerial view of this bar that's showing the opening scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah, they yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. I don't know if it was ah, like, I everybody mean, erupts. nuts, yeah. right? And yeah. I'm like, and a whole just like jumping for joy. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, I'm the idiot. Yeah. I'm the idiot that's just, that is just not taking the time. And I think I should, I guess. Look, I, there, there's a couple of big ones I've been late to the party on. Not very many, mm-hmm. obviously, because, you know, all the entertainment industry stuff like right. Game of Thrones is one. 
it started because of the dragons and stuff. And I was just like, man, I don't like sci-fi stuff like that. Right. Um, or like fantasy shit like that, I guess I should say. Mm-hmm. It's not sci-fi, but, uh, and then the, the wire. Make them ups. Yeah. Yeah. The wire. I, I was. Oh, you were. The, uh, the, here's how late I was on the wire. Right. I had had, um, some type of surgery or I know I had pneumonia. That's what it was. Um, and I was in the hospital for a little bit. Right. And people would come over and, uh, bring food and drop off things or whatever. And somebody dropped off and this was like, we like, Oh eight, oh nine, somewhere in there. Somebody dropped off the wire DVDs. Yeah, the box set of, of, of that. And, I, and they were like, Hey man, you, you never, you've never watched the, and I was like, nah, dude, I've never watched the, the wire. And they were like, well, I'll tell you what you can't, I couldn't go anywhere. Right. I was on bed rest for like three weeks with this pneumonia. So I was just like, I ended up, it's that you, they tell you to sleep, you know, cause they're like, look, you have pneumonia. You've got to get some sleep. Right. Got to get some sleep. The first night of me watching, I watched all of season one, The Wire, which is 12 episodes, an hour apiece in one night. I didn't go to sleep till like four in the morning because I had to watch. The, and I got hooked immediately and I was oh, like, for man, sure. I can't believe I missed out on for this. Sure. I have a feeling it's going to be the same way with Game of Thrones or I'm like, what? What yeah. was I doing this whole time? Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. We've tried. Well, but I think you have to get you have to really get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You but have now, to be committed. There's only like four episodes. It's left. not the kind of thing where you give it five minutes. No, there's only four episodes left now at this point. So yeah. I think we should let it pass. We're not going to catch up on. No, we're not going to catch up. I think it'll be a thing of Game like of one of us will have some kind of surgery. Yeah, maybe boobs or something, and uh, I'll need to <laughs> <laughs> be on rest. Yeah, right? yeah. Away from your family for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And I can watch it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll get into it someday. P- people are asking and I'm like, yeah, we'll get but into it But guilted into it for sure where I was just like, yeah, I, I am the idiot. Yeah. You're I, right. I, I, feel I like am that. the idiot for sure. For sure. I, I feel like that. Mm-hmm. I felt like that with The Sopranos too. If somebody wasn't watching The Sopranos, I was like, are you? You're dumb. Are you fucking crazy? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is something wrong inside yeah. your mind? Yeah. Like that. That's how I felt about that. Yeah. Uh, Friends, Seinfeld, like those shows too where, you know. Right. Um, these days, yeah, it's probably, I would look, it's probably game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is probably the most popular show. Absolutely. Out and there by far. Across all plot. I mean, yeah, whatever communities, walks of life, everything, everyone, it feels like everyone, but me. Right. Yeah. So it's gotten to that point where I'm the only one. Yeah. yeah no, you're, you're definitely the only one. Sure. We are. Yeah. The two of us. We're the um, only one. What I felt good about, though, was HBO right after uh, Game of Thrones, apparently, and I called her online because we weren't watching Game of Thrones, dropped the trailer for the Deadwood movie. Right. So that, boy, blammo, blammo, blammo. lived up to the hype. I was a gigantic Deadwood fan, like huge. And the fact that there's a movie now ready to close this out, I'm amped and it looks great. Man, does it look good. I was worried because it was, I think, 10 years ago it went off yeah. the air. Maybe longer. I don't know. Yeah. And they never tied it up. And I was like, dude. Because there was supposed to be another season. And it just got too expensive to shoot. So they nuked it. Um, and they kept promising this movie forever. And I was just like, come on, man. Are we getting this movie? And uh, the the creator, um, David Milch, he, uh, he has Alzheimer's. And so I didn't know if 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 we were going to actually oh, get this God. movie shot done, trailers out, and then he dropped a, a kind of a, a release about his uh, his disease and what he's been going through. Oh. And I was like, oh shit, because he was infamous for every. A lot of people on that set said it was, it's hard to work for him because he's always rewriting up until the last second. Like I mean, on what? camera, shoving lines in front of actors' faces, saying, "Hey, I changed the scene." You're just like, "What?" Oh, it's a nightmare. But the show is great, so maybe there was a method to the madness. But yeah, he, he said he couldn't do it with this one because, you know, of the Alzheimer's and stuff. But I am really, really looking forward to that movie. I cannot wait for that thing to drop. Like, don't bother me that night. I need to know what happened. What are you going to get done? What do you mean? So mine for the Game of Thrones is going to be the boobs. <clears throat> Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, for, for oh, for, well, it's only a two-hour movie. I'm not going to get anything done. <laughs> I don't need to. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forget. Guys can just get a um a break. 
away from the family. Yeah, I'm, I can just go and watch that. Harder for gals. Whatever yep. hotel I'm in, you know, and just feel like <laughs> harder for gals. <laughs> We have to get something no. We'll, done. we'll watch it whenever that comes out, like uh, opening night. I'm still an opening night person, where it's just like, oh, if well, I'm that excited about it. things, yeah, yeah. Even with this Avengers thing, like again, we're taping this on on Friday. It airs Sunday night. Part of me is like, man, should I just take 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 our son to the Avengers tonight? And he would have, love it. I'm sure, he would. But what do you? I don't, could he sit there for three hours? I think with Avengers, possibly. I mean, I don't know, but the, but even then, it's like. So you guys leave after. No, I know, to, but I, I want to see the ending yeah. and be able to talk to people about it, whatever happens. But yeah. Yeah. I think that is the cool thing about opening nights and things is that you can talk to people about it because par- part of anything awesome in is pop wanting culture. to share. Yeah. It. Wanting to share it with people. Wanting to talk about it. Wanting to see like. Yeah. And that's the positive. One of the few, few positive things about social media is, you know. It's a shared experience, especially in entertainment yeah, or, or sports, where you're like, oh, man, I can't believe this happened. This was amazing. The rest of it's a hellhole, obviously. Yeah, you're like, oh, you like sushi? You're <laughs> eating sushi? I've <laughs> eaten sushi before. And it's just this really great thing that bonds us all together. Oh, my God, you're there right now? Oh, my God, is that a picture of your sake? I've had sake. Of your food? Is that a picture of your food? Or, uh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, boy. Yeah, so I want to see it. I, we'll we'll okay, see. Do it. We'll see. I'd, I'd like do to it. together next week. We've got to go to San Antonio next week. We do. Yeah. Um, just hang. We're gonna shoot some shows there. Right. Yeah. So we're gonna we're taking the cameras, gonna shoot some Take shows the there. The cameras shoot some shows. You know, obviously we have to make everything a working, you know, trip. A working trip. For me, I've got some plans with some gals yeah, that yeah, have of some course. wine and things like this yes. and Cinco de Mayo, whatever. But right. for the most part, you know, working. Yeah. I told you with these trips. I was, I was like, look, man, these trips are not what you think. Now that you got to see them, it's just like, great. So you're setting up, I mean, five minutes into the Airbnb, like we're setting up camera shots. You know I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I've said before, I, I like... Uh, a working trip more than just a trip trip. I like to earn my wine, yeah. if you will. Yeah, so earn your me, wine. Yeah, like to me at the end of the day, whether you're in another place or whatever, I like to at least have a meeting, Yeah, do a show, like have some kind of work to be like, okay, now we, <laughs> now we party, right? Yeah, now, yeah. now is the time we dance. Yeah, n- now we dance. Um, so I'm excited. We're just going to chill there. I am, yeah. yeah. It, it, it'll be fun. to go to Mayo and all that other stuff. Fiesta passed. I didn't know it was the same. Not the same thing. Not the same. No. No. Mm-hmm. no I was uh, reminded of that on social media. Of like, hey, I'm man. sure you were. Yeah. yeah. Fiesta is definitely not the same. Not. Thing. Fiesta is party. Yes. Cinco de Mayo is also party. So having a still having a tough one figuring well, it Cinco out. Cinco de Mayo is actually a some kind of weird independence that isn't even actually the Mexican independence. No, but no, 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 no. It's no. A, it's a you know it's a a holiday whereas Fiesta I think is some kind of festival they have. Uh, question mark at the end? Yeah, I don't know. Look, it's not it, it's not the same. We don't we don't uh, do Fiesta everywhere. Kind yeah, of thing it was it looked very specific. For the for the region, yeah, yeah. Cinco de Mayo, they probably celebrate in Canada. Probably, you know, I don't know. But I think it's worldwide, kind of like. Well, is it is it like St. Patrick's Day? Because we celebrate St. Patrick's Day over here. I think it's kind of like that because it is just a made up holiday for people to drink, for white people to drink. Yeah. Well, so, Cinco de Mayo is obviously we we have a huge Latino contingency here in mm-hmm. the United States, so I think that's for them too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, hey, you get it, you get to. Have but a they're party. definitely. It's one of those like, like Saint, like uh, St. Patrick's, where, you know, Irish people look at you like, yeah, yeah, it's it's Tuesday, do, it's Tuesday. Yeah, we understand. And uh, I'm sure Latino people are like, or Mexican, whatever, are like, mm-hmm. great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll drink for sure, but like, <laughs> you guys are definitely. <laughs> So you're, really? you're taking this I mean, way more seriously than we are. appropriation that happens during Cinco de Mayo, we still haven't, you know, fully addressed as a nation. 
we just kind of do it. Yeah, we just do it. We kind of do it until enough people get pissed about it, right? To Which... so where the white people, the sombreros, and we're drinking yeah, Corona, yeah, yeah. and it's like, this day and age, it is a little cringy, but I mean, shit. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put pictures of Tecate all over my Instagram. And stuff yeah, like Tecate that. tacos. Yeah. Right. Yeah, get fun and flirty just with it. Just a fun and flirty. Because I think our last day there is is Cinco de Mayo. We leave yeah. the next day, so why not? Let's go for it. I think we should. You know what? I, I man, I, I'd love to, but I don't think we can get down there back in time. Is uh, go to ba- Baby Acapulco's down in Austin. That's the thing. I, I mean, Oof. I would want to go to Austin too, but that's a whole other trip that two, I think we well, should Well, it's, it's only like an hour drive, right? But two margs there. You, you have two margs of Baby Acapulco. Good night. Those purple ones? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not driving home after that. So. No. No. Uh, <laughs> no, but different vibe. Like we've said the last show, completely different vibe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going yeah, to Austin and going to San Antonio. So I'm happy to just be going there and sort of just check it all out. See what the fucking deal is. I know yeah. a lot of our listeners live there, so I don't know. Maybe we fucking go to a bar or something. Oh, we will definitely go to a bar. Like, so I don't know which we'll one. Let yet. people know. Yeah, we'll let people know yeah. for sure. For sure. Uh, that'll bring us to the revolutionary figure of the day, Jabless. Okay. Um, this one's going out to uh, John Havlicek. Uh, Hondo. He was, look, one of the greatest NBA players of all time. He passed away. Uh, last night at, at uh, 79 years old. R.I.P. Um, played all 16 seasons with the Celtics and uh, won eight championships. I mean, that's crazy, man. Uh, there's only two people who've won more championships than him. He had Parkinson's, um, and that's what he passed away from. But uh, he was a Buckeye. He was an Ohio State guy, too. And that was he was on one of the, the greatest teams we've ever had there. Uh, just everybody and their mother came out and, and, and outpouring last night and just said what a great man he was and uh, just always super positive. And no, one of those guys, you never had a bad word to say about him and you consider him one of the best of all time and, and you move on with your day. Uh, but I want to salute him. He was uh, arguably probably the, I would say top two, three that's ever come out of Ohio State too. For basketball, we're not a bit, we're not really a basketball school so much anymore. Um, but uh, he was the dude, man. He was the dude. He's on the last championship team. So, uh, R.I.P. Hondo, you were amazing. James, pack it, pack your bags. <laughs> I do you're, need you're to pack my bags. Going on a little trip. Going on a trip. Going on a trip. You're going on a trip. Going to eat some tacos and wear some sombreros. <laughs> Shout out to Granny D in Shangri-La. Check it out. Check it out. If you're around there. If you check, go to check, California. Check, check, check it out. L.A. Ventura. Uh, and get some uh, recreational marijuana. Exactly. See that you do it at Shangri-La. Shangri-La. Because uh, she's coming out here to, to babysit the kids. Because people ask, hey, who's watching your children? We get a Granny D's are going to be out here. So it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. Shout out to Granny D. Go to, go to <laughs> Shangri-La. Shout out to Granny D. Go to Shangri-La <laughs> and buy some weed. Uh, that always fits well, doesn't it? It does. Who's, it who's does. watching your children? Uh, she owns a marijuana shop in uh, Ohio. Yep. <laughs> Look, but in again, in California. It's legal. It's, but it's Should never. Should be legal everywhere. I'm sorry, but it's never been a weird thing out there. Ever. Yeah. So even moving out here, like I've said before, it's so weird to be like, oh, are we whispering about yeah, yeah, yeah. weed? Since yeah. I moved here, whispering about weed has been very, very strange to me. Yeah. But yeah. let's hope that we, let's change that. Oh, it's all, it's all bond. Let's, let's get rid of the stigma. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go into after hours? After hours? After hours on the show. Why not? The stigma? Yeah. Why is everyone taking away the stigma of stuff? What do you mean? Like, I wanted to talk about depression. I want to take away the stigma. I want to talk about... So it's my new it's my new annoying thing. So people that are like, I want to talk about like miscarriage to take away the stigma. Sure. I want to talk about, you know, uh, whatever. Light-induced seizures to take away the stigma. Right. I just go, I didn't know... Didn't know there was one for that. Yeah, or that big of a stigma. Yeah. What does that even mean? (laughs) 
you don't have a computer uh, that works at all. Um, it does. You just take don't away use the stigma it. Stigma of depression. You know, it's a big deal. What do you mean? Take away the stigma. Right, right, right. Of you that. What I mean, all de- depression is bad. I guess it's like, well, it is bad. We should. Yeah, because we we're all look trying to get people. rid of it, aren't yeah, exactly. we? Exactly. Yeah, that's a that's that's everybody's rallying cry these days with different I, every I little know, I, thing. Yeah. Of like, well, the reason I'm talking about this, I want to get rid. Of I want to get rid of the stigma. stigma. A lot of it, and sometimes if it it's to make yourself relevant again. So, or to put yourself in the spotlight, as far as I can tell. Right. You know, because it's stuff that isn't that, you know, blended family. Yeah. The latest one is Alex, Alex, uh, Alex, Alec Baldwin's. Yeah. Wife wanted to speak out and take away the stigma of a blended family. What's, uh, what kind of blend is, are they Just working when with there? Every, most people's parents are divorced. Yeah. And then they get remarried. Mm-hmm. That's a really normal thing. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah, it is. It is. How, it's weirder to have your parents still together, no? Yes. Okay. So I, it's, it's 50, what are you look, 50% taking? percent of America Yeah, is. you're not take. You're not. You're now the spokesperson for taking away the stigma of a blended family. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Where I go, I think you're making it. You are so in your own. Deal right where you you're dealing with like having to deal with an ex wife and a blah 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 that you think you're it you're the only one maybe that's going through it I think and that you need to use your platform to talk about people about to to talk to people about divorce and remarriage like I I think everyone sort of understands that that's a pretty normal thing at this point right I th- I think this with a lot of celebrities. And their wives, right? Who they're married to. Sure. They always have to have a cause to feel relevant or feel like they matter or, or, or like they're doing something important. And then I don't know if that's the celebrities themselves who are just like, oh, man, this is my wife. She's an amazing woman. She's crazy passionate about taking care of legless dogs. Right. And you're like, oh. Taking away the stigma. The stigma of legless dogs. I'm and just it's like, speaking out about. My, my dog can just roll over. Without command, because he has no legs. Bringing like, attention wait, to, I want to bring attention to, you want to bring attention to yourself. Yeah. What you want to bring attention to. And there's some things that, look, the stigma should be there. Like, I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to fucking hear about that. Who was it? Uh, the Kelsey Grammer's wife. She's on one of those Desperate Housewives things. She is. Uh, and I and think she probably IBS. wants. Yeah, she wants to take, the, take away the stigma of IBS. I think if I speak out about it, it'll take away the stigma. You think of, you know what I mean? No, it's like when I hear, when I heard her say that, when I heard her talk about the IBS. Now every time I see her, um, I just think about her shitting her pants all day long, Absolutely. just sprinting to a bathroom. Like, didn't I don't, I don't need to know that. Like, I know what IBS is, right? Right. You're not going to make it cool or trendy or you know, like, oh hey, everybody's doing it. No, right. Or I'm not going to look at you and if I have it, go, oh, well she has it. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Or whatever. I think that everyone's still struggling with it, whether you speak out about it because you have some show to do it on or not, mm-hmm. right? And I think that, I guess, finding your community within, you know, on social media or within your t- p- people that are going through the same thing that you're going through yeah, is fine. But I don't know about shouting it from the rooftops takes away any stigma. I don't think it does. Yeah, I don't either. Because now I look at you... In a different light. Right. So the stigma is still there. Stigma's still there. Just because you're Alec Baldwin's wife doesn't mean that I'm not like, ah. Oh, doesn't mean geez. there isn't stigma. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that I don't think now. Or Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields came out famously about, you know, postpartum and having to be on, you know, medications. And she now. So right. now every time I see her, I think she, uh, she has to, you know. Yeah. She's got to do the, the whole thing. She's got to be on medication and she is, a, you know. Yeah. Still a stigma. Still a stigma. Yeah. What, and again, what does stigma mean? <laughs> Do I have to look this up for you? Yeah, I will. We look, know we're, we're in OT, so it doesn't really matter. We're in OT. You can look um, it up. Yeah, everyone's we can, turned off. We can look everyone's it. turned off. No one's listening to, to no this nonsense No one's listening. We could talk anymore. about whatever. So it's like, yeah, the blended. What, what would be my... What would stigma be is, a, is a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or person. Right. 
person right. can be a stigma. Right. So uh, you're, you're trying to take away the disgrace of it, I guess. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Not not all things like a blended family. That's not a. I don't think that's a plot. I don't think it's a, it's something that you need to go on, on for the years. Today Remember show. the Brady Bunch for Christ's sakes? Hello. Blended family. 70s. We're good. That was 40 years ago. I'm a blended family. You're a blended family. Like we're. Uh, Everybody. Everyone. Yep. No Literally everyone I know. Yeah. Oh. Everyone I know has a stepdad, stepmom, stepsister, whatever it may be. And it's that is what made it the norm is that it's just everywhere. You know what? This, and you're the, about 20 years too late, Alec Baldwin's wife. And not only that, but uh, I think the stigma she should be taking away is how much younger the second wife is from the first wife. You know why you're a blended family? Bitch, because <laughs> he wanted You're to marry 20 younger. Twenty years younger than his first wife. <laughs> so what? Do you want to take the stigma away from that? Not really. You don't want to mention that, do you? I wonder how. You know old, what I'm saying? Yeah, I wonder how old she is. Um, that's a big. Gate. I don't even know her name. It's a big age gap, but you can oh, definitely yeah. look up yeah, Alec yeah, Baldwin's yeah, yeah, yeah. wife. Um, I, I it was funny when we were um, ooh, here we go. It, this this is gonna be a this is actually gonna be more surprising for you. Are you ready for this? Sure. <laughs> Kim Basinger. Yep. Who was the first wife? Yep. Hot, hot. Oh hot. yeah. I, for, I mean, still looking great. Sixty-five. She's sixty-five Jeez. years old, right? Normal, normal age for uh for for what she yeah for how many years she's been. <laughs> Uh, Hilaria, <laughs> by the way, uh, her name is Hilaria, um, is, is his new wife's age, his new wife's name, Hilaria Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Dead serious. Um, I, I hope we should pronounce it. <laughs> I, I don't know. Hilaria or something. Yeah. It's Hilaria or something like that. Yeah. 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 I don't remember. It's H-I-L-A-R-I-A Hilaria Brown. We'll go with Hilaria Brown, right? Hilaria. She is 35. You bet. She's you bet. Thirty years younger than Kim Basinger. You bet. You want to take some <laughs> stigma away from something? <laughs> That's why it's really hard to be in a blended family. Yeah. Let's talk to Kim Basinger about it. <laughs> Let's talk to her about how how she had to deal with it. Okay, and how hard it was for her that her daughter is the same age as her stepmom. It, are they the same age? Got to be. Got to be They're pretty close. close. They're really close in yeah. age. And that was something. And I think they said that on the Today Show too. Ireland, yeah, and, Ireland Baldwin is 23 years old. Yeah. So, so they're they're very close in age. 12 years apart. And that's what she said. That's what's hard too. And I'm speaking out about it. I'm going to speak out. Just because you're saying something that's going on in your life. I don't. Yeah. So Alec Baldwin is 61, right? Sure. N- new wife is, is 35. So gotcha. it's, a, it's a good 26 year difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is a huge leap. Um, you know, what's weird is when we were watching, uh, was it entertainment tonight the other night when they had the, the full house? Stamos. Wow. Saget. Cool. Yay. Cool. Yay. Oh man. Classic. <laughs> cool. Yay. People forget Dave. Cool. Yay. Was the inspiration for you ought to know. I by know. Alanis Morissette, which is crazy. Everyone to me. knows that. Uh, no, but, but that's the it's still three, crazy to me that it's still Coulier crazy. made you that crazy. It's the three amigos. Yeah, those those three. They've been besties ever since that show began. They're still besties today in real life. Um, they each, and this was brought up by a female reporter yesterday. No, that was brought up by Saget's wife. Oh, was. Yeah. <laughs> was she the one interviewing him? Yeah, so she has oh, a show. She has a show called go. Eat Rock Travel. Eat Travel Rock, something like this. <laughs> and so from the fame of Saget, yeah. she gets to do some fucking travel show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to take the, you know, stigma away. <laughs> I want to take the stigma away from eating a lot. Yeah. <laughs> can I can I maybe have maybe a platform for that? <laughs> The stigma away from cute gals eating a burger like a fucking man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take the stigma away from a from a lady <laughs> like myself just horking down a wing, right? <laughs> Can I take the stigma away from that? And I'm speaking out about it because I know that there's a lot of people out there that yeah. 
and feel the same way. There's no shame in your wing game either, too. Like, we Because we go to wings, I don't know, probably once every two weeks. Sure. We like Would wings. I rather eat them alone in my bathroom? Sure. But I will go out in public and do it. Yeah. And not only that, but you'll tell the waitress, I want all flats. Mm-hmm. That's a wing eater right there. No <laughs> one. All flats. Yeah. Extra no crispy. No one says they want all flats. And it's the, like it's always a female waitress. No one's like shocked. Like, oh. No, whoa, they've she asked wants me. The only reason I know flats. is because they've asked me before. Okay. Um, but but anyways, on, on this full house thing, the wife goes, can we talk about the fact that all of them are divorced? They're all remarried. All the dudes on full house are married. Their new wives are exactly 23 years younger. All three of them. End of interview. And they all kind of like, it was like the guys looked at each other. Yeah, and, and they were the like, cut, that was a hard cut away. Yeah. The weird um, part about it, too, is like Stamos was married to Rebecca Romaine. Yeah. And yeah, that still was, was just not good enough. I was just yeah. like, yeah, gotta Rebecca, go younger. Yep. Gotta go even younger. Gotta go than younger that. than Romaine. And they're going very, they're going less celebrity and maybe that's part of it so same alec all three the three amigos and alec baldwin yeah. have all gone with like yoga teachers sure normal hot girls yeah, yeah, yeah. that are out of the spotlight so it's like rebecca she was on her own thing right i can tell you why kim basinger she's on his own her own thing so because that that's still you still have to deal with that of like you, you know if you're dating a celebrity or married to a celebrity mm-hmm. older and they still want to do shit and it's just like hey I kind of want somebody just to be with just me and travel be, on my yes, schedule. Yes. So, and I, that's what you do realize. So all three of them are with. I understand that trend where it's like, all right, cool. I just don't want to do shit. And you can just travel around the world with me. Yeah. And the a, most a normal you hot might girl. Do, great. Yeah. The most you might do, which is Alec Baldwin's wife does a podcast. Not going to say what it is. And a. Does she really? Mm-hmm, and a blog. Yoga blog. She's like yoga mom, whatever. Okay. And. Uh. Saget's wife is doing this eat rock travel bullshit, but that's the most that they'll do. Do you know what I mean? They're not right. trying to get parts and stuff, whatever. They are going to use a little bit of their fame and boredom when the husbands are gone Yeah, to start their own little thing like this. Yeah. Why not? Blog. Yeah. YouTube. You know, something like that. I didn't know people were still blogging, by the way. I actually still don't even know what that means <laughs> where would you where do you find just blogs i don't know it's funny man i remember tumblr when yeah exactly when blogs first started you know everybody, everybody was blogging i'm a blogger and this is what i do and then it was vlogs vlogs you know video logging, yeah right? so the and blog everybody was I just like now. that will never catch on now that's all you see on youtube and all that stuff is is vlogs vlogs right? and they're like and i would because i would rather watch a person i would rather watch a person talk than then read. Th- then read, you know, whatever their, their bullshit statement. Because it's, look, it's hard to write and, and people aren't good writers. Right. And the blogs that do, you know, turn into books, it's because they were so. They were great writers. Great. Yeah. Great writers and they had no publisher or whatever. And they started with the blog to get out there, whatever. And, and but Hilaria Baldwin, that's not somebody that I'm. No. Like, oh man, I bet you she's got amazing yeah, things no. to say. No. <laughs> she can do yoga. And um, they have four kids. A lot of people do yoga, though. Yeah. So what's the what's the specialty of that? Of why yoga? is she better? Yeah, why is she better than everybody She's else? She's just someone that did, you know, put the, put her videos on and took awesome yoga pictures. So if you have a professional photographer. Great. And your great body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have a rich-ass fucking house that you can take pictures of, of yourself doing yoga, you will shoot to the top of a yoga blog. Yeah. World. Yeah, 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 for sure. Is she better than anyone else? I don't think so. Probably not. Probably, Probably not. not. <laughs> but you do, you only know her name because she started doing yoga stuff with Alec. Yeah. Yeah. So I liked... don't get it fucking twisted. Hilaria. Hilaria. No one would have fucking known you unless I, you got married to I like this little OT. I like going overtime with you like this. I like going it's overtime nice. too. I think maybe we should do it sometimes. Yeah. To where uh, it's sure. just uh, you know, if you dare to listen, there there's a there's a point when you can turn off. Yeah. If you want. But then if you just want to chill for a little bit and talk about stuff that's a not interesting, <laughs> b not funny and weird. 
and goes nowhere, <laughs> hang out. This is, a, this is a, a normal conversation we just have around the house, and we just we just did it on air now. So yeah. you're welcome. You're yeah, welcome maybe we'll that. have fights sometimes, like in OT. We're trying like, to like really work out something yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, that like some problems. Yeah, we're trying to get rid of the stigma of that. So of overtime. Uh, no, just of of talking. Of, he, of two humans of talking two together. Humans I want to get over that of man and wife talking together. Man I and wife get, talking. I want to get that stigma out of the way. Mm-hmm. I want to get. I want to get away from the stigma of like podcasts. Yeah, same, same. Not being <laughs> podcast, not being you know listening to people talk. I want to get away from that. Yeah, you guys just do it. Yeah, if you want to get away from it, you can subscribe on YouTube. Boom, nail that in there to wrap it up. You're welcome. Then you can watch our two faces and Jesse smashing the microphone. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, aka the Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>